A very good Sunday afternoon to you watching KTN Weekend at One. My name is Najma Ismail. Now, thousands of participants joined the First Lady Margaret Kenyatta on her half marathon in Nairobi as part of her Beyond Zero initiative to improve maternal health care in Kenya. Mrs. Kenyatta crossed the finish lane at 10.30 on Sunday morning on International Women's Day seeking to raise 600 million shillings for mobile maternal health clinics for the counties. Now, our reporter, sports reporter and anchor Lin Washira has been running with the First Lady and now joins us on phone. Lin Washira, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Trust me, it's not easy to run. Mm -hmm. It looks easy when you see people running, but actually when you get onto it, yes. it is crazy. Oh my God. Like, yeah, I know, you, you're tested, sometimes mm -hmm. you actually want to stop, yes. but then you have to keep going because you know it's for what it costs. But it was definitely a good experience for me, and I do believe for everyone who took part in the second edition of the First Lady Marathon. Fan fantastic. Now, what was the First Lady's finishing time? What did she clock? Unfortunately, I do not have the official time as of now, mm -hmm. but I was speaking to the First Lady coach, Douglas Vajayhori. He told me that... Uh, this year's time has improved uh, with about half an hour as compared to last year's uh, half marathon. Fantastic. And that is incredible. I mean, half an hour improvement. I know. It's is simply amazing. Fantastic. And what's happening currently at the ground? Where is the First Lady? Uh, actually, the First Lady, of course, got here, let's say, an hour and a half ago. Uh, the first thing she did when she got here was of course she went straight to for some massage. You know, running 21 kilometers under this heat is, is not easy. Yeah. And then after that, she, she came, she gave her speech, uh, presentation for the prizes were done. And now everything is actually over. People who took part in the race are just now, you know, it's, it's just have fun. Get entertained and live at your own pleasure. Fantastic. And w how was the turnout? Were there many men, the male participants, were they more than the female participants? Um, I did try to hear that, but if you're asking about, uh, you know, comparing the number of male participants to the number of female participants, definitely the female participants outdid the male, the male counterparts. Um, it was, I, I, I can't even imagine. It was so many women who came out. Uh, last year we had about 12,000 participants in the in the first edition. This year there were over 30,000 participants. I mean more than double from last year's event. Women really came out in large numbers this year. Wow, thank you very much. Lin Washira there. Once again, congratulations to the First Lady. Lin Washira to you and everyone else who participated in the Beyond Zero yes. Marathon. Now, moving on. A group of over 200 youth had been contracted to carry out water mapping project in Machakos County, took to the streets over delayed payment by the county government. Transport through the busy Machakos Nairobi Road and roads which connect other counties came to a standstill after the angry youth used stones to block the road. They claimed that the county government had gone against the contract they had signed, which stipulated that all payments were to be made within that week. The project that was initiated by the county government had aimed to start a mega water harvesting program for the better of the people of Machakos. Now, Machakos Governor Alfred Mutua has since remained tight-lipped. Now, hundreds of residents in Kiwandani and Kilifi took to the streets to protest the arrest of some 30 squatters in the area. The residents waved placards and twigs as they marched along the streets and later on stormed the governor's office. They demanded the release of the squatters who were arrested for demolishing a perimeter wall of a disputed 20 acres of prime land in the county. The rowdy crowd tried to force its way into the Amazon King's office, forcing the governor to come out and address them.
tunasema ya kwamba na hii ni sauti ya kaya sauti ya kaya inasema hivi wazee wanasema hivi watashirikiana na wananchi katika kutatua swali la ardhi na viongozi wetu hawa tunawaomba washirikiane na sisi tutakacho ni shamba na nataka niwaambie wakazi wa kilifi kwamba mimi nitatembea na ule mwanya ambao tumepata katiba kukomboa si haya mashamba mawili peke yake lakini mashamba yote ambayo yalipewana kinyume cha sheria ndani ya jimbo letu la kilifi The National Land Commission has repossessed a 21-acre piece of land belonging to a, a two schools in Mombasa County that had been grabbed by some two private developers. Swazuri uh, went to Rabia in Kilifi County where residents had raised the flag over two companies that were claiming ownership to the land housing Kajiwe Primary and Secondary School. Swazuri said that the land was public land and could therefore not be owned by any other entities other than the two schools. This comes just as the land ministry and the National Land Commission were left on the spot over the controversial Langata primary playground say to have been grabbed by private developers. Nataka munyonesi ule ambaye atakuja hapa aseme yake. Huyo ndiye mkimpata ni iteni mwishimio. Huyo ambaye atakuja sema ni yake huyo. Alafu wa wale ambao tayari wamekuja tayari tusha wafanya masila ya kwamba masavia wende plans waka yofanya hivi county government ijue wanze kupima ikifika mwezi wa sita wa saba shule zote tunataka ziwe na title zao. Hapo mtukufu rais alisea alituambia hivyo. Fanyeni jovyote lakini kutukia mwezi wa sita wa saba kila mtu hawe na title zake. Tasa tuangalie wataiba shule zipi. Still on property tassel now, the son of former presidential escort commandant Charles Kimurgur has been forced to live in a makeshift tent along Eldoret Elgeo border road after his mother reportedly evicted him from the family house. Now, reports indicate that police raided the home of Ibrahim Hussein Kimurgo and threw his belongings out, citing an eviction order by the High Court. Helen Chirono and his son are said to be embroiled in a long battle of succession of the family's property valued at over 50 million shillings since the death of Kirmurgo in 2005. Now, Ibrahim claims that after he returned home from abroad, he found his mother and sisters misusing the family property, which he opposed. Then his mother then filed an application in 2006 at the Milimani High Court seeking prohibition of Ibrahim from taking possession of the estate of her deceased husband. However, Ibrahim says the legal documents issued to evict him were fabricated. Decades of waiting for help yielded nothing for a group of parents in Madira, Nyeri County. The school that educates their children, Kabiruni Primary School, deteriorated slowly over the years since independence when it was first constructed, posing a health risk to the children. Tired of waiting for government's intervention, parents in schools pooled resources and joined hands to rehabilitate the school. Now, Carol Nderi uh, has those details. Withered hands toil laboriously, not even stopping to catch a break for the work must continue. Their children, and for some, their grandchildren, cannot continue schooling in these deplorable conditions. The dilapidated buildings betray the school's ancient history, built here even before the country attained independence. The school's head teacher Nancy Kagondo says children are sometimes forced to huddle in the staff room when it rains. There is no proper shelter. The cracks on the wall do not make learning any better, especially in the chilly Nyeri weather. The earth surface on the floor is a jigger's heaven. People from lower classes had to move from their class. They go and join the upper classes because the rain, is, uh, uh, the rain had to come all the way from uh, those uh, forests and uh, enter the class. My party required 1940 something. As the adage goes, unity is strength. Over 500 parents took it upon themselves to rehabilitate the battered institution, age notwithstanding, both old and young, hammered away to give the pre-colonial school a facelift, essentially saving on funds that would have been used on labor, instead channeling the money to buy building material. An alumnus of the school, Geoffrey Regadi, who schooled here some 36 years ago, was equally here for the noble cause. I came because the public health officials had given a notice to close down the school because the sanitary conditions were in a very bad state. Na tulisaidiwa na na CDF kwa madarasa chache lakini hii jina tukaona ni mzuri tufanye hili watoto watoke kwa fumbi. Juu samani hii sula yetu ilikuwa baya sana 
sasa tunataka ikae kama masude yale ingine ya ya academies hata hii tu, tuwe tukijifunia hii shule at sunset their achievement was telling six classrooms fully renovated were towering the school compound a challenge parents of kafirini primary school have thrown to others that collectively you can transform whatever situation without government intervention carol derry katian madera nyeri well more details on these and other news stories in our subsequent bulletins thank you for watching the weekend at one my name is najma ismail